if you are throwing filth on us, we will wait, we will make manure out of it and throw it back at you, hoping <laughs> they are not countering what you say. They're against your existence. They don't want us to exist. All these people who are living on… living in this country like leeches, sucking blood off this nation, so if a leech is unhappy, I'm happy. This question is from Chandrasekhar. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Around ten days back, there was another series of vitriol from certain people on social media against you. Oh. Criticizing your <laughs> comment on the volume of food an average adult eats in his lifetime. I also saw a response from Isha Foundation to trolls, which I thought was very strong and uncharacteristic of Isha. My question is whether it is appropriate for a spiritual organization to react to such trolls, however vitriolic. <laughs> How did they respond? I'm not following all the foundation tweets. How did they respond? What did they say? Abusive? It was. The tweet was, instead of fourteen thousand kilograms, Sadhguru misspoke and said fourteen hundred tons. It was a mistake from a video from many years ago, where the content is not about the volume of food anyway, but the amount of filth in your head you must be eating, more than fourteen hundred tons for sure and what? Who… who is sending out such tweets? Huh? Ma, you? Oh! Well, look at the ma. Ma, you… you made the tweet? No, don't worry, ma, I'm just out to congratulate you. <laughs> uh, because uh, a lot of people have this expectation, a spiritual organization means it must be wimpy, without any nerve to stand up in the world and do anything worthwhile, simply <laughs> I'm glad uh, this little mom I generally find Isha Foundation's responses very wimpy, I don't like it, so I don't look at it. If this kind of spice is coming, I'm going to read it from now on <laughs> Well, uh, you need to understand this, whoever is talking about this, about saying, oh, can a foundation spiritual organization respond like this, I don't know where you come from. Because obviously you have some imported sense of spirituality, which is just about wimp. In this culture, Shiva, look at the man, hello? Does he look wimpy to you? <laughs> He's carrying a weapon in his hand. You see Rama, a gentle human being, still always a weapon in his hand. You think he's carrying it for decoration? <laughs> he won't… he won't simply go and kill somebody, but if somebody provokes him enough, he will. He will, yes or no? Krishna, you know him only battlefield scenes only you know him, always in the battlefield only, all calendars. So obviously you know about Krishna and Shishupala, 
this is an ideal situation for that. There was one Shishupala, in an assembly of people, he went on insulting Krishna, abusing. So Krishna said, see, you've said too much, you're nearing ninety-nine. Ninety-nine insults you put. If you cross ninety-nine and become hundred, I will not keep quiet, I'll take your head off. But that guy doesn't stop, he says the hundred thing. So Krishna just takes his head off. Hello? <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> in this country all the people you worship, they're not wimpy, these kind of people, that's why so you're imported from elsewhere. Here, uh, we are not unnecessarily looking for a fight with anybody, that's not our idea of life. But if you're throwing filth on us, we will wait, we will make manure out of it and throw it back at you, hoping <laughs> Hoping uh, <laughs> hoping you will also blossom one day. So, but this is just a... this is not even... never the foundation should abuse anybody, okay? Please don't take this as a license. Foundation should never ever abuse anyone because that's not what we are here for. But little sarcasm won't hurt anybody and it's needed in the world. She just asked, what are you eating, obviously? Even I have a doubt <laughs> because I really have a doubt what these people are eating. Day in and day out, filth is coming out of their mouth all the time. What are they eating and how much? This is a question in my mind also, I'm glad this little ma <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm saying little ma because she's... Uh, she's only what ma, four feet two inches ma? <laughs> I say little more than that <laughs> I want you to understand, in this culture, spirituality did not mean simply being like this. Just look back and see, everybody that I mentioned. Or in more recent times, you look back and see there is a Guru Govind Singh who created a whole militant race, okay? It once happened, Vivekananda was traveling back after his American sojourn, he was coming back through UK and Europe. On the ship, those days they're traveling by the sea, there were some you know, some small-time missionaries going to India for their own work and they went on abusing because they knew Vivekananda had gone to parliament... Uh, parliament uh, uh, of religions and he had made waves in America, he was in news everywhere, so they didn't like it that he's having impact in the West. So they went on abusing Hindu way of life and the Hindu gods, they started saying all kinds of things. So Vivekananda told them, see, this is not necessary, you leave it, you, you're going to do your work, I'm doing my work, just leave it. But they wouldn't listen, they went on. So Vivekananda walked up, he was built well, strong, he held this missionary by his collar, lifted him up and said, you stop this rubbish or I'll throw you overboard <laughs> And he stopped. So, action in the world is as it's necessary. We will never get abusive like them. But sarcasm is needed, huh? So otherwise what you eat... Uh, just rice sambar, can you eat? You need some pickle on the side sometimes. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> and even somebody like Mahatma Gandhi, who's considered the apostle of peace, who walks like this, he is full of sarcasm when he needs to. When uh, somebody asked him, you know, this is a British era here, when they were doing terrible things to this country. So they asked, uh, what do you think about Western civiliza civilization? When he was in London, he went for that meeting, whatever that round table meeting. I said, what do you think about Western civilization? civilization? Mahatma Gandhi said, it's a good idea. So, <laughs> congratulations, Ma, you're making me happy.
And uh, if somebody is going crazy about it, it's their choice. People who don't have a life of their own, they live on Twitter. What a place to live. You express something on, you, on the Twitter, it's different. Now it's not about what you have said, they are not countering what you say. They're against your existence. They don't want us to exist. They're not countering a certain idea that we have put forth and they have something else to say, it's perfectly okay. They are not countering anything that you say. Whatever you say, they will abuse you. Whatever you say, they will abuse you. Because they don't want you to exist. Because I want you to know, our very existence is dissolving their existence. That's it. <laughs> All these people who are living on… living in this country like leeches, sucking blood off this nation, they don't like it. They don't like it if human beings become more conscious, more aware, stand up for themselves, they don't like it. They would like the country to be poor, they would like the country to be ignorant, so they could always do what they were doing for all these years. So, if a leech is unhappy, I'm happy <laughs> It's okay <laughs> Maybe I will start looking at the Isha Foundation's tweets from now on, if you're going to provide such excitement <laughs> But as I said, never ever use abusive words as they are doing because we are not against their existence, we are only against what they are doing. If they are against what we are doing, they must point out what we are doing wrong. But they are against our existence, simply abuse. So it's all right. And uh, if any of you are getting a little hyper on this, please relax. This is the nature of Indian spirituality, this is not a wimpy spirituality. This is standing up for life. For what matters, we will stand up and do what we have to do.